All right, so Giovanni's been helping me ride motorcycles today Hell yeah. uh, here at Thunder Mountain. And now we're going to take a, a long trek. He says he knows this place uh, for lunch. And uh, it's a ways from here, so uh, we're going to go do that. Hooters, huh? One of my favorite spots, what can I say? <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to take us that far out. I wasn't expecting that long of a ride. You know what? Sometimes the longest rides are the best heat, so... I don't even know if I can find my way back from here to uh, Thunder Mountain Harley Davidson across the parking lot. Well done. Well done, Giovanni. I guess I should be in this. You're watching Riding with Marshall and today I'm at Thunder Mountain Harley again and I intend to be here quite often. And uh, today we're looking at a bike that most of you would love to get your hands on if you ever do any dirt bike riding and as well as street bike riding because it's got some modes on it that uh, few other bikes have, like adjustable riding position. Anyway, um, I'm at Thunder Mountain. We're gonna have uh, Ryan talk to us about this Pan America Special. Let's do a little walk around first. stand by the bike here. What can you tell me about this 1250 engine, Ryan? So it's a pretty new engine. Harley has not used anything really like this. Um, it's pretty similar to what a lot of people would similarly call it, the uh, the V-Rod engine, but it's totally different. It's called the 1250 Revolution Max. Um, so they kept the Revolution name. Exactly. They kept nice. the Revolution name. Due to the overhead cams. Exactly. Nice. Due to the overhead cams. It's all going to be one case, which is different than a lot of Harleys. Um, engine and transmission are all in one. So it also has one oil. Uh, if you know anything about oh, Harleys. One oil, yes, thank you. If you know anything about Harleys, you know that they take several. Um, right. So this guy takes one. Um, what we have right here is our demo model and it's set up very similar to a special edition. Um, it's got the center stand, which is pretty great to have. If you're gonna be doing any off-roading, side, uh, roadside maintenance, good stuff like that. We've got the tubeless spoke rims puts down on weight, easy to fix if anything does go wrong. Um, adaptive ride height, it'll lower itself whenever you come to a stop and then pump itself back up going over rocks, terrain, uh, good stuff like that. Got several different ride modes, sport mode, rain mode, off-road, off-road plus, um, variable valve timing as well. It's also liquid cooled, 
Now VVT, that's another new thing for Harley, like within the last five years or so. Yes, exactly. There's not very many that have that sort of situation going on. Um, yeah, and it's water cooled, isn't it? Yes, it is. So you do have a radiator. Um, and it does keep the temperature down very nicely, especially hot desert rides all day long. You're not going to see very much movement in the temperature on that. Something else that's interesting for Harley here is that we have, what is this? What even is that? I think that's what they call a chain. Well, it makes complete sense because your two choices for dirt are a shaft drive or a chain. Chain delivers the highest horsepower of all three final drives that we know of. And you don't want a belt on a dirt bike because rocks and belts, uh, well, they leave a mess with the belt being the mess. The rocks don't even care. So Harley has clearly done some engineering beyond just the twin cam 103s. Once upon a time, the twin cam 103s were just, okay, this model's got a bob fender. This model's got wider rims. And that was the only differences. But now Harley's actually doing some engineering. It's keeping up with, uh, well, the adventure crowd. So a question comes up, would a Harley employee want to buy one of these machines? And uh, well, the answer is kind of obvious because here's a Harley employee and uh, for Thunder Mountain anyway, and uh, this is his machine. So Kyle, tell us something about your machine, what you've done to it here. Well, I'm officially two days into owning her. I got about 200 miles on her so far. And uh, just like any Harley rider, I couldn't ride a stock motorcycle. So on day one, I took home a uh, enough boxes to fill a Christmas tree at Christmas time. So um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the accessories I went in and put on. First one was the smoked windshield. So this is actually quite a bit shorter than the stock windshield. This is at its full height. You can see I already Did went Did it come through. with those bugs already just to look cool? <laughs> No, those are, uh, those are authentic Colorado squished bugs. All right. So again, this is the shortest windshield option available and you can see I already made it through a field of bugs. I didn't get one bug to the face riding through that whole field of bugs. Again, this is the shortest windshield available. So that just tells you how aerodynamic this bike is. A couple other things I put on, I went ahead and did the headlight guard. So in case the guy in front of you is throwing rooster tails and tossing rocks at you, you're not gonna break your headlight there. Oh, you missed one. You didn't get the radiator guard in there. Oh, that one's on back order. She's going to be oh, here I soon. Believe it. Yeah, a brand new bike like this, I'm sure it's hard to get all the parts you want for yeah, it. Yeah, not 100% of them are here yet. Now, moving over to this side here, I did do the tall riser. Um, now, I actually had experience riding this bike out in California before it was released. And uh, we did a Was fair... that on Mojave? That was out in Mojave, yep. I did the raw You were in the Mojave sure with was. all the other magazine editors. I sure was. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So I got to put this bike through its paces before I even hopped on one. Or uh, before I swiped my card, I should say. So I heard, uh, let's see if I got my numbers right. Uh, was it 19 people were there riding? Uh, there were 22 in my group. Oh, okay. There were okay. several Might have been a different there. group than what I was watching on TV. I said 19 were riding, 17 went down. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, out of the 22, uh, 19 went down. We're I say being one of the few that didn't go down, my boss just said I probably wasn't riding hard enough, but he wasn't there, so he doesn't get to make that call. But I did ride a bike that had the tall riser on it. It's two inches taller than stock, and it really, really helps when you're standing up. You have absolute full control of the motorcycle without having to crouch over and hurt your back at all. I see that with a lot of bikes, and uh, my own wing has risen, uh, has risers on the uh, handlebars. I don't know why they insist on everybody leaning over their handlebars. Uh, they must have healthier backs than the rest of us, huh? I guess. I mean, <laughs> especially standing up. I can stand up on my wing. Right, right. I showed uh, Geo that yesterday, but uh, I don't think I could do it if I didn't raise the bars. Yeah. So. so then moving so on. So this I, is the special too, also? This is the special, yep. Now I did not do the adaptive ride height uh, just because I don't know why, but I like to be on my tippy toes on a dirt bike. It's just what I'm used so to. So you would have locked it anyway. I would have locked it anyway. Okay. Yeah. And I did on the bike I was out in California. Now I did experience it a few times and for those of you that are vertically challenged, it will absolutely help you ride this motorcycle when no other motorcycle in this segment would be available for you. Um, so moving on here, I did do the Screaming Eagle titanium slip on pipe here. Adds a nice rich exhaust note to it, but it also shaves you about eight pounds off the motorcycle, which when you're counting numbers, eight pounds is quite a bit. 
and then I did throw the guard on there because I do plan on knocking this thing over at some point. Nice. What else are you going to do to it? Or are you going to put the top case on the back? Ironically enough, the top case is the only piece I did not order. Um, I did order the, the racks and the, the soft luggage. I, I like the soft luggage over the hard luggage. Uh, sacrificed some volume there, but uh, a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, to soft it. luggage doesn't break when you land on it. Correct, which I plan on doing. So, <laughs> um, In my Christmas tree full of boxes, I do have the full skid plate. Hasn't made it onto the bike yet. Okay. But it does come with because it's a, a special. Correct. It does have. It a does skid come plate. with a skid plate of some kind. Absolutely. At least to protect the rectifier. Yep. And uh, this skid plate, it's hard to see from here, but it does follow the bottom of the motor all the way to the back. Now the bigger skid plate is going to be a little bit more involved. It's going to come up a little bit higher and you know cover your oil filter and whatnot better. Right. Um, so that'll be on the bike eventually here. Nice. Um, yeah, I ordered just about every accessory you can. I'm waiting on the knee pads, which really do help. I rode it out in California. They give you a little bit of traction to squeeze that tank harder with your legs. They do. Keep you in place on the I motorcycle. had knee pads on my concourse, and yeah. I had to put them there, but yeah. it made a world of difference. It really does, yeah. You can get some traction with your legs. There. Nice. Well, thanks. Absolutely. Come on in and ride one, man. We got a demo here. It is absolutely worth the trip. And I'm about to do just that. Absolutely. Okay, so left handlebar. We've got our lights, we've got our cruise control, reserve and set, toggle switches, home screen for the menu. Honestly, I don't even know. I'd have to, I have some learning to do. We have our power switch over here. I just felt the bike lower as I turned it on. That's awesome. We have plus and minus sound controls on this side, a hazard button, which hopefully we won't have to use. And then there's ride modes. You can see some symbols changing here. Oh, we don't want rain mode. Let's just use highway mode. Okay, so Giovanni over here, he's going to lead me on this ride. And uh, we're going to get after it is what we're going to do. Yeah, it's just a short ride, but uh, give me, gives me a feel for the bike because I'm actually interested in this one. Now, let's say I want to raise the windshield. It looks like it's easily enough done right here. <laughs> Maybe easily enough. There we go. Unlock it. Lift it up, let it lock again. There we go. That's how you adjust the windshield, and I figured it out with no manual. All right, clutch in, kickstand up. Pan America is quite a switch from the, well, switchbacks, street glides, and the usual HD fare. 
I can hear my uncle Crash belly aching about it already. That ain't no Harley! Real Harleys have push rods! And where's the floorboards? You know I can't chair sit with my bum knees! Where's the round headlight? Oh, Uncle Crash, you know you would just replace it with a daymaker or adaptive headlight it comes with anyway. Sheesh, he's not even my uncle. He's everyone's uncle. We all know a few. He and I disagree on many things. I think if Harley is to keep being a great American company, they have to not rest on their heritage, and they have to get to the forefront of motorcycle engineering. With the Pan America, they're doing exactly that. Honestly, how many other Harleys can boast 150 horsepower off the showroom floor? Other than the V-Rod, I can't think of any that come close. With one mic drop, they have joined the playing field held onto by KTM and BMW. It's been a while, but now Harley-Davidson is back in the sandbox again. With a water-cooled engine featuring overhead cams and variable valve timing, Harley has a bike that can compete bar to bar with the other brands already riding the desert sands and forestry roads. Well, my ride today isn't going to touch this bike's full potential because I'm just some guy that likes to ride and I'm not a big budget magazine with a weekend to spend taping it. Sorry. However, here's what I can tell you. Even when it is turned off, the bike amazingly seems to stand up on its own. When it was on the showroom floor, I had it standing off the stand with both my feet in the air. This says something about its great balance. Also, with the bike off, I thought it was just as tall as all the other adventure bikes that intimidate me. And then I started it and felt it lower both my feet to the ground. This is the optional adaptive ride height feature. Although you have to order it as an option from the factory, I'm very intrigued by it and I've never heard of such a feature like it before. Now you can have a tall adventure bike without being stuck with a tall bike at a Fort Collins red light during a Colorado windstorm. Ask me later. The suspension is high tech now too. You now get semi-active front and rear suspension with vehicle load control meaning you can tell the bike how you are loading it with passenger or luggage and the suspension compensates. This is something I've never owned on a bike either. I can adjust the rear on my Goldwing with the press of a button but it doesn't adjust automatically while moving and there is no adjustment on the front like the Pan America. I've also never had a steering damper or an adjustable brake pedal that requires no tools. There was a time when Harley Davidson would unveil a new model and the rest of the motorcycle world would stand up and copy them. Well that time has come again. It's an unfair review to test a dirt bike on the street, but I don't own a trailer, so my bikes have to perform on the road as well. This bike is fast enough to get on it at the green light and switches gears quite smoothly, and the clutch pull was out near the end of the travel, but that's most likely adjustable. Sorry Uncle Crash, there's no clunk when you switch gears like you just dropped a keg into the oil pan. Instead, there's a nice soft click. The clutch lever was easy to pull back. It turns far more nimbly than my Goldwing, which it had better do because it's a completely different style of bike. But I had no complaints about its turn radius at all. I would be happy to take it out into the dirt. The brakes were adjusted perfectly. The only thing I would change is already mentioned by most reviewers. Raise the bar if you expect me to stand up on the pegs. I was able to stand up on the pegs quite easily, but I really was reaching down for the controls. Here's a thought. Add adjustable bars. Next year's model, maybe? Oh, and while we're talking about next year's model, can we have it in sand tan? So, would I buy one? The adaptive ride height would have me say yes, even if it never touched the dirt. Oh, it would get quite intimate with the dirt if I had one, so and I'm not smooth. usually a dirt biker. It comes in standard or special. I'd pick the special and it comes in other colors than orange. It's hard for me to make up my mind between gauntlet gray metallic and vivid black. But now I'll admit, I don't know what it would cost me out the door, but I'm guessing a Pan America Special in gray with adaptive ride height and tubeless lace tires might run me around 25,000, just like every other bike I seem to pick out from every other dealer. Grr. Maybe when a used one hits the floor. We'll see.
Anyway, you've been riding with Marshall again, and I'm going to keep telling you to keep your chin up in the curves of the road and in the curves of life. Everyone say hi to Shay. She also works here. She's the best. So come see me in blood. Come, yeah, come see Shay. <laughs> <laughs>